all the miraculous works that he has done to God Almighty. And we read it in Gospel of Matthew chapter 12 verse 28 where he says, I cast out devil with the finger of God. Gospel of Luke chapter 11 verse 20 he says, by the spirit of God I cast out devils. He says in Gospel of Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 where he says, all the powers are given unto me. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he makes the concept of God clear. Some people misinterpret and misunderstand this. But the concept made by Jesus was very clear. He says in Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 3, And this is life eternal, that they all might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says in Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16 and 17, when one comes to him and says, Good master, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He was talking about paradise. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, Why are you calling me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. And if you have entered into this life, keep the commandments. And the first of all the commandments we read in Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse 28, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he says, Shama Israelu, Edono Elaheno, Edono Ichad, Hero Israel, the Lord, our God, is only one Lord. And you should love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. This is the first commandment of all. I am asking you, the one whose knowledge is not of his own, the one whose powers are not, are not of his own. The one whose will and words are not of his own. The one who is limited in what he's saying and foreseeing. How can he be God, my dear people? How can he be God? And Bible clearly denies that man can be God. It says in a very strong terms in book of Job, chapter 25, Verse 4 to 6, it says, How can man be justified be with God when he, in the sight of God, is just like a maggot? You know maggot? Small, tiny creature in the sight of God. And how can he be clean who is born out of a woman? The Bible says this. The qualities of God, it should be unique as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unique and alone in his lordship. As Allah the Most High is alone in unique in his names and attributes. As Allah the Most High is alone and unique in his divinity. And Allah defines himself. He says in Surah Ikhlas, Surah number 112, ayat number 1 to 4. Qul, say to them, to the people of the world, who Allahu Ahad, he is Allah, the one and only. Allah Samad, Allah the one who is absolute and eternal. Lam yalid walam yulad. He does not have any children, neither any parents. Walam yakullahu kufu wan ahad. And there is nothing whatsoever like unto him. This is the most concise, simple, understandable definition of Allah the Most High. That he is the only one and those who are more than one, they can never be God. He is the one who never dies and the one who dies can never be God. And he's the one who is independent. And the one who is dependent can never be God. He is the one who can never have children. Why? Because if he has children, they will be like him. And there is nothing like him. Allah is unique. He cannot have parents. Why? Because if he has parents, parents are greater than him. And he is the greatest of all. We say Allahu Akbar. And there is nothing comparable to God Almighty. Let us understand the, first, the second subheading of my talk, that is, is Jesus, the literal son of God in the Bible and the glorious Quran. This gives us the concept of Trinity, where the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they explain, the Christian scholars, they explain that Father is a person, Son is a person, Holy Ghost is a person, but they're not three persons, but only one person. And they give an example, that being a principle, a person can be a husband of someone, a, a person who is being a principal and father, can, he can play three roles. Being a principal, he can play the role of a husband. Being a principal, he can play a role of a father. But these all are one. I say, I say, I agree with this example. But if principal is fired from the university, 
this news will be also be given and known to husband and father three of them that is one will be sitting in the home not in the case of Jesus and God Jesus Christ peace be upon him he clearly says in gospel of Mark chapter 13 verse 32 he says on that day on that hour knoweth no man no not the angel neither the son but the father only and I was interacting with one Reverend Chaco a scholar of Christianity his name was Reverend Chaco he said Trinity is a mystery you can never understand it but just believe I say is God's purpose it's is God's purpose to confuse people Paul himself says no in first Corinthians chapter 14 verse 13 he says for God is not the author of confusion he does not want to make things confusing moreover the word Trinity itself it does not occur in the entire Bible but it is there in the glorious Quran not to adopt it but to keep it away Allah says in Surah Nisa Surah number 4 ayat number 171 and don't say Trinity stop it it's better for you for our Allah is only one he's not one in three or three in one Allah the Most High makes things clear moreover the closest verse which gives the sense of Trinity is mentioned in first epistle of John chapter 5 verse 7 which says for there are three that we are record in heaven the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost and these three are one this is the closest verse which gives a sense of Trinity but this is the Bible which is King James Version this is published in 1611 we will find that verse in this Bible in this version the King James Version but when we see the revised the revised standard version revised by 32 Christian scholars by highest eminence backed by 50 cooperating denominations they revised it in the year 1952 and it's been revised again and again they say that this verse is an interpolation is a concoction as it is not to be found in the most ancient manuscripts of the Bible so they have taken out you will find it here and you will not find it in the revised standard version moreover this title son of God is not an exclusive title for Jesus as it is very common in the Bible in book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 2 that the sons of God saw the daughters of men it is mentioned in book of Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 9 Ephraim is my son even my firstborn it says in gospel of Luke chapter 3 verse 38 Adam which was the son of God it says in book of Romans chapter 8 verse 14 for as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God in the language of the Bible a righteous person is the son of God not the literal son not the literal son for example we know that Mahatma Gandhi you know has contributed to the mother country India and to humanity Mahatma Gandhi was given a title the father of the nation the father of the nation that does not make him the literal father of the nation that does not make him it is a metaphorical term is a term of respect and as a matter of fact Christians they agree on this but they say Jesus is not like that Jesus is not like that everyone is made by God but Jesus Christ peace be upon him is begotten begotten not made and they quote the verse from the Bible gospel of John chapter 3 verse 16 which says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life again I am asking the Christian scholars what are we trying to emphasize by saying begotten because begotten means to beget and begetting is an animal act followed by the lower animal function of sex how can we attribute such a lowly attribute to God who is holy who is pure who is most gracious and Allah reacts Allah reacts in Surah Maryam there is a separate chapter by the name Surah Maryam chapter Mary in the Quran chapter 19 